Rescue 8, truck 6, truck 3, battalion 3 in the on-call inspector. 2303 West 46 Street, number 208. Welcome to Sioux Falls Fire. I'm Division Chief Steve Fessler. This is a new program which will feature all facets of Sioux Falls Fire Rescue from fire and emergency medical calls to gear and apparatus. Now I'm Fire Inspector Tyler Churchman and I'm co-hosting the show here with Chief Fessler. I'm going to take you behind the scenes with the men and women of Sioux Falls Fire Rescue and show you what they do on a daily basis. Along the way we're going to do some fun experiments and we're going to go over some safety tips to keep you and your family safe. Each episode of Sioux Falls Fire will bring you insight onto what we do and how we operate. Not only the regular features, we'll go behind the scenes and talk to the firefighters on the line and find out what they had happened during an event. Tyler? Hey, and we also want to hear from you too. So if you guys got any questions about what we do or you want to see something new on Sioux Falls Fire, just send us an email. Our link is siouxfalls.org slash fire. You'll find all the information on there, how you can submit a uh, submit a question to us. So with that being said, welcome to Sioux Falls Fire. So to kick off this first episode of Sioux Falls Fire, I'm having a brief talk here with uh, Chief Brad Goodroad. Chief, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. A um, couple of things I want to just kind of work through and talk to you about. Uh, it's been a little over a year that you've been chief with us now. Um, give us a little indication on how things have went, some of the things that have uh, happened and, uh, and how things are going. Yeah, it's been a fantastic uh, little over a year now. Um, you know, working with uh, members of the department, working with other members of the city team, uh, you really get to see the ownership that everybody has and what we do um, mm -hmm. through all the departments and through our own department. Um, we've accomplished some things like uh, strategic planning, um, successful cadet class, uh, working on training center, and uh, some ALS things. Okay, with ALS, what do you mean by ALS? Sure, you know, we have paramedics in the department that uh, have, have not operated as paramedics, so ALS is advanced life support. Okay. Uh, everybody in our department is an EMT, uh, but we've, we're going to work into some ALS, some advanced life support, okay. um, working up in 2019 to, to start that up. So in 2019, we'll, we'll be seeing that, yep. that come through. Yep, we'll start to expand okay. that. And with the training center, we're looking at uh, building something new. Is that, that all correct? Sure. We had a consultant come in and look at what we currently have and the condition of our current buildings and site. Uh, and the recommendation is to move off site. Um, so we've been working on finding land for that. Um, working with city council, with the mayor, um, other city departments, and uh, developing a plan to uh, find a new location and, and develop a concept plan for a new place. Us along with Sioux Falls PD, right? Right. So it'll be a public safety uh, facility okay. with us and, and the police department. Okay. And we had a cadet academy, a cadet graduation la this last year. They made it through their first year now, and uh, we've got some testing coming up soon, correct? Right, we had a really good 14-week uh, cadet class. Uh, those graduated last fall. Now they've just completed their uh, one year on the job, um, successful completion of that. And then, uh, yes, coming up this fall, we have testing. So if you're interested in uh, the position of a firefighter, mm -hmm. you want to go to the SiouxFalls.org uh, mm -hmm. under fire department, uh, sign up there, and then uh, we'll have the testing in October and, and November this year. Yep, so sign up is coming up here in September. Yep. And then testing in October and going going through the whole process. What's what's kind of the process consist of? Sure, they'll uh, go in there and sign up for an interest. The city will let you know when the actual enrollment period is. You'll sign up there. Uh, then you'll be scheduled for a written test. Okay. You'll do our physical ability test. And those that successfully complete those uh, will be invited back uh, for an interview. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we create our kind of our eligibility list, and then we will have a cadet class in 2019, and we'll draw off that new list. So, Chief, a uh, little bit of information to to get out there. What uh, what do we have for employees with Sioux Falls Fire? Sir, so if someone's interested in being a firefighter, they want to come in and they know what our department's about. We've got 208 members, and mm -hmm. we've got 11 fire stations, with uh, 12 scheduled to be uh, built and staffed in 2021. Yep. Uh, and we're really a truly a, a multi-hazard. Um, agency, yep. not just fire. So we have EMS, uh, we have HAZMAT, we have USAR, we have an uh, inspection bureau, um, we do car seats, we do a lot of community outreach things, so it's a really a wide variety of things that we do. Mm, sounds good. So if anybody's interested, go to SiouxFalls.org slash fire and you can find those links. Um, anything else right offhand that we got going on, big coming up for Sioux Falls Fire Rescue? Uh, well, we really had a good successful year with our social media. Um, we created our hashtag uh, 
we are SFFR. Yep. And uh, through that also, we started a newsletter for the department, really a family feel for department members, our retirees and spouses. Um, and we've had a little over a year of that going out now every month, so that's been a real successful thing for us too. So really building on the culture that we have within, within our department here and, and uh, just working forward. So, well, thank you very much, Chief. I appreciate it. Like I said, this is uh, the inaugural show for Sioux Falls Fire. Hope, hopefully everybody enjoys, thank you. I'm with Captain Dave Jensen here and uh, just want to talk a little bit about what you guys are doing out here, uh, doing quite a few different evolutions and the one we just saw your crew going through is the the RIC evolution. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Chief, correct. Uh, we were doing uh, RIC evolution. Um, uh, basically what it is is a rapid intervention to help save or uh, extricate one of our downed firemen from a, a building if they were to get injured or trapped or, or lost in the building. So. Um, we always uh, have a team at the ready outside the building to, to help protect those that are interior um, at any time. So today the drill was just kind of honing some of those skills that we already possess. It um, wasn't any new training, it's just kind of a timed event to kind of make sure that we're meeting national standards as far as uh, RIC deployment goes. Yep. What are some of the tools that you use when, when you're ready and going in for something like that? Right, yeah, I mean, besides our normal hand tools, our set of irons, um, we uh, also carry a extra breathing apparatus that we can use to uh, uh, hook into that down firefighter should he have ran out of air or he or she ran out of air. Um, we also carry uh, some other uh, special tools, a lot of rope tools, uh, things that we can use to uh, fasten to the patient or the firefighter to help help us get them out of the You usually the take in the tick, right? The thermal yeah, imager? Yeah, thermal imager, that, that, which I have strapped to me right now, that, that's, uh, that comes with me every time I get off the truck if we're going to a fire. So um, Rick team would be no different. Um, that's a, obviously a very uh, beneficial tool to have along with us. And so when you're going in there, what are some of the, the things that you look for, how you work your way around to find them? Are, are you listening for stuff? What, what do you got going sure. on? Sure. I mean, the Rick activation starts, or the RIC team activation starts way before the, the emergency happens. So um, it's it's from the not even the moment we're getting off the truck, it's actually from when we're approaching the scene. We're listening to all those cues, all the radio traffic, because um, we might not be one of the first crews on scene. We might be coming later. So we're listening to where crews are operating in the building. So then when we get that RIC assignment, we can kind of have a general idea where they're at. Um, going from there, it's uh, we all carry on our uh, uh, air packs, we have integrated pass devices, so personal alert safety systems that they'll activate if a, a firefighter's down or he can manually activate it if he needs to. So, uh, very loud, audible alert that we can hear and kind of help us hone in on where that down firefighter might be. And the in our packs that we have, they light up also if a, if a firefighter goes down. You can, right. those strobes are going off, you can try to take a look and see them. And so, it's just there's a lot of pieces to it, and they all work together on getting us to be able to find that down firefighter to, the, to get them out as soon as possible. Absolutely, um, you know, we always say that uh, our safety is number one, and if we can't provide for our safety, then it's hard to provide for somebody else's yep. safety. So we, we do, we, we have some of the latest and best technology that's out there, that the latest standards, and it helps us help other people and help our own people if it comes to that, so. All right, well, thanks, Cap. You and bet. Uh, we'll look forward to watching you the rest of the day. You bet, thanks, Chief. Thank you. All right, we're out here talking to fire apparatus operator Buck Burdick, uh, the infamous Buck Burdick. Hey, Chief, what's going down? Uh, we're just having fun out here today doing yes, some evolution. Yep, absolutely. Uh, looking to find out a little bit more about what all we're doing out here, running these pumping evolutions. What are what are some of the different ones you've ran through today? Well, today, Steve, we've got a lot of different things going on, as you see. We're putting, it, we're putting every rank into action here today. Company officers obviously are working on their tactics, working on managing their crews. Firefighters are working on deploying multiple different hose lines. Um, obviously we carry different size hose lines on all of our apparatus here in Sioux Falls. And all those hose lines, obviously, as you know, have a different job. Yep. Um, so the firefighters are getting used to working with the different size hose lines. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm working with the firefighters to provide adequate water flow two different types of hose lines, fire streams, master streams, things that we don't deal with on a normal basis here, here in Sioux Falls. Yep. And I see in one of the evolutions, you're hooking up to a standpipe. Yep. Uh, another one, you've got a ground monitor going. Yep. Where each time you're going, you know, hooking up to a hydrant, running the full evolution from start to finish, timed. What are, what are we looking at for, you know, types of things like that with the timing, making sure we're hurting certain marks or yeah, so the, the goal here, when, when, it come, I mean, the, when it comes right down to the, the, 
the basic evolution of fighting fire, it's gallons per minute. Yep. You know, more gallons, you know, certain gallons per minute will take care of, this fire will need 100 gallons per minute, this fire over here is gonna need 500 gallons per minute. So, to deliver that, we use different things. We obviously use different size hose lines. We use different types of uh, um, hoses. Everything from, we've been uh, flown through the uh, truck through the aerial devices today yep. and a lot of master streams. So what we're going for is we are going for benchmark times on the amount of time it takes us to perform a certain amount of tasks from laying different size hose lines, hooking up water supplies, yep. uh, grabbing uh, water supplies to, to different lengths, doing new, numerous different types of hose lays, and then being actual, actually able to deliver gallons per minute to different places on the fire ground within a certain time frame. So, well, I guess one of the big things you're telling me is there's a lot of math to <laughs> this. You know, believe it or not, Steve, uh, I am a driver and, and, and I do math. Yeah. I know, I right? Because you, you, you must calculate through a lot of different things to get the right. Yes. You're dealing with friction loss. Friction you're dealing loss. With elevation. Elevation. Just, there's appliances. a lot of different things. Yep. Know? Yep. So basically, when uh, as, as a driver, when I get on scene, I have to take numerous things into account. It's not just hook up to a hydrant, pull a lever, and then wait for the uh, Red Cross to pull up with the sweet and salties. Yep. We have to go ahead and figure out a lot of different calculations. So I'm freaking because if I don't have the right um, pressures going to different places on the fire ground, I can either not accomplish anything, in other words, the fire's not gonna go out. Two, I can run my water supply out and ball game a pump, or three, you know, I, I can hurt someone or one of the firefighters, or more importantly, you know, I can't deliver what needs to happen right now to help whoever, you know, might be need that water right now. So yep. yeah, there's a lot of figuring involved. A lot of math, a lot of calculations, yep. things yeah, to we, know. Yeah, actually we uh, pull out dry erase markers and we'll write on the side of the pump panel. Okay. Figure out our numbers on the side of the pump panel and then of course it races off. Yep, and go from there. And we go from there. Yep. Alrighty, basically what we're looking at is start to finish, doing it right every time. As, as close as we can, yes, sir. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Buck. You have a good day. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Hey, it's Tyler Churchwood today. We're here at Station 2. Station 2 is a hazmat station on the east side of town. One of the exciting new things that we're going to do is we're going to go behind the scenes and show you the different things that Sioux Falls firefighters do on a daily basis. So today, we're going to take a look at the different levels of hazmat protection these guys have when they go on a call. And to help explain all this, I have firefighter Ryan Farsdale with me. He's one of the crew members here at Station 2. Ryan? Tyler? Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so we got different levels of protection here. First of all, what is a hazmat incident? There, there's different types of hazmat incidents. Um, usually it's a, it's a release of a gas or a un unknown gas or unknown solid that could be harmful to people, uh, your pets, or even, even the environment, such as your groundwater or the river systems, things like that. Okay, so when you guys go on a call, when you guys get dispatch, you really don't know what you're going to. You just know it's an unknown substance, and you guys got to figure out what it is. Yep. So when you guys get there, how do you know which level of protection you guys are going to use? Um, basically, we've got, uh, there's actually four different uh, levels of protection. There's a level A, B, and C, and then D is what we're actually wearing right now. Okay. Um, typically, uh, we're going to find try and find out what type of... Uh, substance it is. Is it a liquid, a solid, a gas? Um, but like this this here, this is a level A. This is a vapor. This is going to protect against vapor and uh, splash protection. And this is a, just a splash protection itself. So okay. you're still going to wear a, a, your, your SCBA with your um, face mask and um, self-contained breathing apparatus okay and then also you're gonna have your level C of protection our regular turnout gear that every firefighter in Sioux Falls has and then we'll also care uh, where our SCBAs as well okay so the level A protection that's your highest level that of protection is that's the have. highest level of protection okay so what is this material I mean it's vapor resistant you said yep nothing vapor. can get through that yep there's when we put it on you there's you slide in there through like that and then we zip you up and it's a it's a special kind of a zipper where there's you're not gonna it, you're not gonna get any air through there. Okay. And then on the back there's there's a check valve inside here that uh, won't let any air in. Okay. But so, it'll let air out. So I mean, when you have these suits on, it looks like a simple task. It's probably gonna be kind of difficult to do. Yeah, I mean, it, you're gonna be takes, walking a distance. And it takes a little while to get inside of it. It usually takes one to two people to help you get into it. Okay. Depending on the call and. 
How All fast do right. you want to get done? Well, I think today what we're going to do, let's get me in a level A suit, put me through a simple task. Let's just see, show the viewers how hard it is to actually just do a simple task and what it looks like with a suit on. All right. All right. All right, so I got my SCBA on the first step. Uh, I got the pants halfway on here. The guys are going to help me get in the rest of the suit, and we'll see what kind of task they got for me. All right. All right. So the first thing is what we're going to do is we're going to put your boots on. Okay. And again, your feet are all encapsulated into your suit, so you've got two, two levels of protection basically for your feet. You've got the rubber boots, plus you've got the, the level A garment as well. All right, that way my feet won't melt off when I <laughs> step in something, huh? Right, right, right. That's, that's a good thing to have. Yeah. All right, so how many hazmat stations are in town then? In Sioux Falls, we have two hazmat stations. And uh, we got one on the north side of town and one on the east side of town. All right. All right, what's the next step? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have you stand up. Okay. And then we're going to put your, I'm going to have you put your mask on, and then we'll start encapsulating you. All right, sounds All right. good. So you want the mask on then? Yep. And then you can go ahead and even start getting on air. Okay. All right. So how many different levels of hazmat is there? Is there operations? There's, there's a couple of different levels. You can be in operations, you can be a hazmat tech, and then we also have hazmat specialists as well. Okay, and what level are you? I am a hazmat tech. Is there a lot of training involved with that? There is. There's, uh, we do a lot. In order to get your tech, we actually send all, all our guys out to Pueblo, Colorado. Okay. And then there's some other schools that you can go to as well. All right. All right. So yeah, I'm breathing air. Yep. I'm going to strap that up too. All right. Okay. And then now what we'll do is we're going to have, we're going to cover you from your right side and we're going to kind of have you duck down into the suit. All right. There you go. All right. Feel comfortable? Yep. All right. You, you notice that all the, the gloves are all incorporated into the suit. Yeah, everything is all attached, huh? Right, yep. So there's not going to be any liquid. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to zip you from okay. the top on down. And then so we'll once Velcro I'm you. In there, I'm airtight now. No, no vapors or anything can get Nothing, in there. Nothing's going to get in. All right. All right, that's all there is to it? That's all there is to it. I'm a hazmat guy now? You're a hazmat guy all now. All right. All righty? All right. Ready to get out? Ready. All right, Tyler, I want you to come in now. What we're going to actually have you do, we're going to have you take a, a sample of the product that's on the ground. Okay? okay. So down here is your pipette. That's what I want you to grab. Okay. All right. And then there's also a jar there too that we're gonna have you take and put the sample into. Okay? Tough with these gloves on. <laughs> Doesn't get easy. All right. All right, so now I want you to come down here and where you see a good spot to take a sample from, take a good sample and then as much as you can get, put it in the, okay. into the jar. That's definitely, Tough with gloves and can't little, really see much. A little bit harder than uh, trying to do anything with medical gloves. Right? Yeah. All right. So when you're done with that, and when you're done with that, then we'll actually put that down, and then we, the command post would want you to take a picture of it so they can see. A picture? Yep. A picture with a regular camera. So in our kit, we have a camera. Okay. So now you try and try and do all the camera with those gloves on it's a lot harder too yeah and I don't know if you can notice you see but your your mask is already fogging up yeah as well. it's starting to get hard to see yeah. I can't yep. see much so yep. it's, it's a difficult task and it's getting hot yeah yeah <laughs> all right all right so I take a picture yep take a picture okay and then once you get that done now we're we're basically done with like a recon and we'll take all this information back to our scientists back at the trailer and then also give give them all the information that we have and then we'll show them a picture of what what we've seen so far okay all righty all right sounds good all right time to get out of the suit i think yeah <laughs> 
All right, I want to thank everybody here at Station 2 today to uh, show me what it's like to be in a level A hazmat suit. And hope you guys stay safe out there. And oh, yeah. thanks again. And yeah, no problem. We'll Come be back. back next time, next episode, to show you another behind the scenes task these firefighters handle every day. Yeah, we're right here on scene at a townhouse fire, and I'm talking to Captain Bo Mortensen. He was uh, one of the first arriving units on scene, and his crew was uh, actually the first one going in to the uh, unit that was involved. Captain Mortensen, tell us a little bit what you saw. Well, we, we pulled up on the scene, had heavy smoke and flames. Uh, we were assigned to Division One by Truck Two Thank Officer. You, we were in the back of the building, Charlie's side, entered on Division Thank One. You had uh, heavy smoke. Uh, they had knocked down Got the majority of the flames. Uh, we did a primary search of Division 1, found nothing there, advanced up to Division 2, did another primary search there, and then started with aggressive overhaul in all three bedrooms. So on an overhaul, what are you talking about there? So we're, what we're worried about is extension through the walls to the, the roof system. So basically we take our tools and tear down the roof and the walls and just get after it so pulling down ceiling yep, exactly. pulling down sheetrock yep, exactly. checking for any fire extension scene if it, it went to the oh, next yep. unit yep. up in the attic yep. space right. anything like that yep exactly all right so uh pretty hot in there when you got in there or, or what were you uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't real bad it was it was warm but um yeah had it self-ventilated before you went in yeah it, it was ventilated through the roof already so i mean it was there was still significant smoke, and but it wasn't uh, wasn't terrible. All right, sounds good. Well, I know you're in rehab. Uh, you take it easy. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, I'm here with uh, FAO Reed Strum. He was uh, the acting captain on this, on the first unit in truck two. Uh, give me a little indication of what you guys saw when you first came in, Reed. Um, well, we got dispatched. We were on 10th and Sycamore. We just left a car accident there, and we were back in service, and they dispatched us to this. And we could see heavy smoke all the way from 10th and Sycamore, so we knew we had heavy smoke coming in. So I radioed that in. I could see heavy smoke. And then when we got here, I radioed in heavy smoke from the Charlie Delta corner, rear side. And um, group. there were some yep, police officers bar. here telling me that they believed that the vacancy, the building, the was, building was vacant. That vacant. they got, yep. had yep. gotten everybody out yep. and yep. it was all good. Okay. So I had to right now. He's got get dressed while my firefighters and driver I can see all three of them. Got the line water established and yep. we start hitting the exterior. So they start off with like a quick 360, walking around, checking things out type situation. Yep, that's what I did. Because when I came here, I could see this whole side here, the Alpha side. And I walked around here on the Delta side. And I walked all around back so I could see the Bravo side. And then I set up the front of my 360 and why my firefighter was Dallas on the outside. And you guys got a good knockdown on yes. the exterior. Yep. Yep. Knocked that down as yep. engine one and looked at it to go far. inside. Yep, Correct. and then engine one arrived and and uh, Captain Bo Mortensen said he would take, you know, division one for entry, so I signed him entry on division one. All right, good job acting up today, mm -hmm. taking care of yeah. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're here with the Cougar leaders at USF going over some fire safety training today. We're looking at fire extinguishers, how to get everybody out of the uh, dorm room safely. So right now behind us, we have the firefighter challenge going on where we drag a dummy, pull some hose and stuff like that. Have you guys done that challenge yet? No. You have not. How about this? How about we challenge each other? You two work together as a team. I'll take you guys on and see who wins. All right. Sounds All right. Good. Sounds good. All right. The challenge is on. So stay tuned for results. All right, so we got the challenge out of the way, and it was a photo finish, but I think these girls won. I think they might have had a little head start, but we'll go with that. So what'd you guys think? Was it as easy as it looked? Or? It was definitely no. a lot harder yeah. than it looked. I would have not been able to do it by myself. No, de definitely no. not. All right, we're here with Abby today, and we're gonna go over a quick fire extinguisher uh, training. 
So, Abby, have you ever used a fire extinguisher? No, I haven't. You have not. All right, so we use a, it's called a pass Ackerman. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, we're going to pretend this is the fire right here. So the first deal is to pull the pin. So if you want to pull that pin. Yep, just hold it. Now pull it. There we go. Pull. And what we're going to do is we're going to aim at the base of the fire. And then we're going to squeeze the trigger. And then we're going to sweep the base of the fire. So you think you can handle that? I think so. All right, let's give it a try. There we go. Good job. That's good. Good job. All right. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. It's the pass Ackerman. You pull the pin, aim, squeeze, and sweep. All right, we're here with Rebecca. Now, Rebecca, you just went through the fire evacuation drill with the crews. What did you think about it? Have you done this before? Yeah, this is my third year with the leadership team, so I've been through it a few times, and I was an RA for a year, so I had... So, so you've done this before. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So now, when I watch you guys, you guys are running down the halls, you're screaming, you're pounding on doors. Is they, they teach you a method on what you're looking for, what you're doing? Um, just definitely making a lot of noise, banging on the doors, and then... Um, when you're actually in the residence hall, you know, knowing who's on your floor and making sure that pe you aren't missing people as they're coming out, that there are people coming out of the rooms, that there aren't people staying inside is okay. the big thing. Okay, perfect. All right, now, you know, this is just the fake smoke. Now, if this was a real situation, we're full of smoke, do you think you could handle it under pressure? I would hope so. That's what the training's for, right? Yeah. Three years of training, right? All right, well, thanks, Rebecca, and uh -huh. thanks for being here today. Once again, this is Division Chief Steve Fessler and Fire Inspector Tyler Churchma, and we'd like to thank you for watching Sioux Falls Fire. And remember, if you do have any questions or anything you want to see on the show, please feel free to drop us an email. You can go to siouxfalls.org fire and get all the information on there. Thanks again. Thank you.